Hi there, this is Mr. Levitt's science class video tutorial. Uh, today, or this video I should say, is dedicated to drawing Bohr diagrams, electron energy level diagrams, and Lewis dot diagrams, but it's different than the one before. You see, we are drawing ions, the ionic version of each of these types of drawings. Okay, so we have chosen nitrogen as our example to draw Bohr diagrams, energy level diagrams, and Lewis dot diagrams in a uh, ionic form. So we have our nucleus of nitrogen, which has seven protons and seven neutrons. It's in the second period, which means it has one, two energy levels, or orbitals. The first orbital can only have a maximum of two electrons. So we put two electrons in the first orbital. Seven electrons grand total. We put two in the first, which means we have five left over. We know that this is correct. Nitrogen is in group 15, or 5A, which means there are five valence electrons. One, two, three, four, and five electrons, valence electrons. Now, the object of each element is to be as stable as its closest noble gas configuration. Okay? Now, because this is, has an atomic number of seven, the closest noble gas is neon. That's atomic number 10. That's only three elements away. So I've drawn a Bohr diagram for neon. This is super stable. Noble gases are, they, well, they don't react with anything because it has a stable out, outer shell. It is completely full. Okay? This is called satisfying the octet rule. We are short three electrons for nitrogen. So to draw the ionic form for nitrogen, what we would do is we would borrow or we would accept three electrons from some unknown place. Well, you'll know it later in a future tutorial. But what we've done here is we're going to accept three donor electrons from some place. Now look at that. Nitrogen has just accepted three electrons from some place else. It's still nitrogen. okay? It still has seven protons and seven neutrons in the nucleus, which makes it nitrogen. However, it's just accepted three electrons more. So what we have to do, because each electron carries a charge of negative one, we now have a surplus, or we have three more electrons than normal. And so what we do is, that is a grand total of a negative three charge. This is the ionic form of nitrogen. Okay? It has an ionic charge of negative three because it has accepted three electrons, most likely from a metal, which is more prone to give away its electrons. And we put these funky little brackets around here and a negative three stating this nitrogen element is now an ion because it has an ionic charge. We would do the same thing for a energy level diagram, right? So here's our energy level diagram for nitrogen. We have seven protons. We have seven neutrons. I'm going to draw the symbol right here. First energy level has two. Now, before the next energy level, we would have written down five, and that would equal seven. But as you can see, the outer level now has eight. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so we write down eight here, and we draw our little brackets, and a negative three, because we have borrowed, or we have accepted three electrons from some unknown source, most likely a metal, and now in the outer shell we have eight electrons. Now, what about a Lewis dot diagram for the ion of, ni of nitrogen? Well, this is the easiest one. We still just write our nitrogen symbol. Before, we have one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. But remember, we borrowed, or we accepted, three other electrons. Six, seven, 
and 8. Now it has the electron configuration of its closest noble gas, which is neon. Now this is how I want you to do this, but of course, much like the other two examples for the Lewis dot diagram, we have to put down a couple of funky little square brackets and the charge. It's a negative three because we have a surplus of one, two, and three electrons. Okay? This is how I want you to do this. This is for uh, an anion. Remember what an anion is? That's that's a uh, that's an ion with a negative charge, such as nitrogen. Okay, so let's do another set of these, but for a cation. A cation, remember, is uh, an ion that has a positive charge. So let's do it for aluminum. Aluminum, 13 protons, atomic number 13. 13 electrons, again, the atomic number being 13. Uh, the number of neutrons, as I have had to round up to 27 uh, as, an, as a mass number, so we have 14 neutrons. I have drawn the Bohr diagram. Note how there's two electrons in the first shell, eight in the second shell, and three in the third. Okay, we have this aluminum is in the third period. Uh, now, remember, its goal is to reach the octet rule, is to satisfy the octet rule, to have the same electron configuration as its closest noble gas. So again, the closest noble gas to aluminum is neon. Why did I put nitrogen there? That's weird. Huh, I wonder if I did that for the other one. No, I didn't. So, neon. So, because its, period, its atomic number is 13, so the closest is 10. So what aluminum has to do, and it is prone to do, is to actually get rid of its three valence electrons, because it's in group 3A. 3A means three valence electrons. So these electrons are just going to, they're going to take off somewhere. It actually requires less energy to get rid of those electrons. Okay, and so its new Bohr diagram will look like this. We have protons equals 13, neutrons equals 14. We have the first shell, which has one and two electrons. The second shell has one and two and three and four and five, and this is getting done eight electrons. We gave away these three valence electrons. It was easier to do so. And now look at this. We have 13 protons, 14 neutrons in our nucleus, and yet our electron configuration looks exactly like its closest noble gas, which is neon. But we have to put a funky little bracket down here. Now because it's supposed to have 13 electrons, and we now have 10, we just got rid of three negative one charges, which means we now have three more protons than electrons. We have 13 protons, 10 electrons. So this now has a plus three charge. Did you follow that? 13 plus charges compared to 10 negative charges, we have a plus three charge. How about the electron energy level diagram for aluminum? Same thing. Here is the good old fashioned uh, nucleus with 13 protons and 14 neutrons. First energy level is 2. Second energy level is 8. Now, if we were drawing just the regular element, we would have another dash with the, the number 3 there. 8 plus 2 is 10 plus 3 is 13 electrons. But we're not. We're giving those 3 away. So we keep it like this. The only thing saying that this is actually aluminum, besides the symbol I just drew, is that there's 13 protons. If you don't know what element it is, but you know the number of protons, boom, 
13 protons, atomic number 13, that's aluminum. We're going to give those three away because this configuration is far more stable and it has a plus three charge. Totally awesome. And so what do we do for aluminum, the Lewis dot diagram? This is a bit trickier. So let's do this up here somewhere. Um, aluminum, how many valence electrons did it have? It had one, two, and three, but we're getting rid of those, remember? These three valence electrons will take off. So some of you are saying, oh, that's easy, because the closest electron configuration now is uh, neon, so we should actually write eight valence electrons. In this case, we don't do that. All we'll do is get rid of those electrons and put a bracket around this saying that we have a plus three charge. Can you see that? Is that cool? Oh yeah. We got rid of these three electrons. We don't have to put the eight dots here. Okay, Don't do that. Just write down an aluminum with brackets and a plus three charge. So, Bohr diagram for an ion, a cation. Electron energy level diagram for the um, for the cation, and the Lewis dot diagram for a cation, and it's exactly the same thing for our. You remember these guys for our uh, anions. It's tough to get these in your head, but you'll do it. I have trouble still sometimes getting them straight, but uh, you'll be able to do this. So there you have it. That's how you do a Bohr, an energy level, and a Lewis dot diagram for anions and cations. I hope that helped.